This is my first slush. I'm the awkward one with um, three firsts today. So first time in Finland for me, first time with a Britney mic, and first time using this weird new presentation software. What could possibly go wrong? So where's the snow? You guys promised me snow. There's no snow. It's supposed to be snow in slush. No? No snow? OK. Let's try and bring you some. Explosions. What typifies explosions? Lots of heat, light, sound, noise, saturation. They're very visible. All right? Very different, then, from snowballs, which are very small to begin with. They gather pace very slowly. Eventually, they might gain momentum and become something really large. And I'm sorry you can't read that text, but one of the important things, as far as the snowball is concerned, is that it typifies independent development. And I'll come to that in a moment. It's explosions. This, obviously, is a metaphor for marketing. And AAA titles are excellent at generating a lot of visibility, a lot of media saturation, and completely dominating the entire spectrum of communication. They have enormous budgets. But the one interesting thing about explosions is that for AAA publishers, they have to be very careful about the level of creative risk. They can't take too much risk because there's a lot of money at stake. Whereas with snowballs, you start off with a small developer with a small budget, and they can afford a very high creative risk and eventually build a lot of momentum. Of course, not all snowballs survive in the face of large explosions, but there is opportunity there. Now, recently, I asked a whole bunch of developers how they would define success for them. And it's really very simple indeed. For them, the ability to make a game is successful because they're getting to do what they love. Making the next game as well, that's success because it meant that they were able to survive through the first iteration. And really importantly, because so many of these people work in isolation, Staying healthy and sane was really, really important. I asked them about their challenges, and their main challenge, visibility. And of course, an explosion is very visible. So I got a little prize for you. Who likes pie? Hands up who likes pie. Anyone like pie? Everyone likes pie, right? OK, so anyone who can tell me what, what I think visibility means, really, what is it a euphemism for? When independent developers say visibility, what do they mean? Anyone want to take a pop at that? No? There's pie at stake. Who's going to have a pop at it? Nobody? Oh, that's a shame. You were going to get a raspberry pie. But I'm going to get to keep it. Good. So visibility is marketing. That's what it means. It means Becoming visible means being able to market, to reach the market, to arouse desire in their potential customers. But another challenge that independent developers face is one of motivation, to be able to carry on, because, again, they work in isolation. And when finances are tight, it's really hard to stay motivated in what is essentially a passion project for you. And of course, health is a challenge as well. So we at PlayStation spoke to a lot of developers and asked how we could fix this, how we could help them with their success, and how we could help them overcome their challenges. Here are the various routes. Publishing is one. Of course, self-publishing, which is what developers see as Nirvana. Many developers see it as Nirvana. And for a lot of people, for a lot of people create content, not just video games, Self-publishing has been a revolution, has been a miracle, has been getting rid of the chains so you can go straight to your market. But the thing to understand is self-publishing is just publishing, along with all of the difficulties and all of the problems and all of the issues that you face. 
And being seen, in other words, being visible, marketing is really hard because it's really expensive to get that kind of attention. And the supernova, which you saw a picture of very early, the largest known explosion in the universe since the Big Bang, I guess, well, those events make a developer practically invisible. But the other question that I like to ask people who want to self-publish, especially independent games developers, is, well, do you want to be a developer? Or do you want to be a publisher? Because publishing is hard. That's a lot of stuff. And development is really just one column there. If you look at the production column, the third one along, that's what's involved. But everything else there is a job. That's a lot of work. So to effectively bring something to a market, it's very, very hard. You need all of these skills. And a publisher typically provides those skill sets. So that wasn't always the answer. Well, the other route is to get published. Anyone recognize this game? Yes. What's the game? Yes, Rezogun. You get the Raspberry Pi. This is not just any old Raspberry Pi. This is my Raspberry Pi. This is not paid for by the company. This came out of my pocket. What am I doing with this Raspberry Pi right now? I'm marketing it, right? It's not just a Raspberry Pi. This is my Raspberry Pi. I was queuing up on the websites trying to order this before it came out. It's therefore very important to me. However, as a tech lover, I've never gotten to use it. This goes to you guys. That's Housemark, right? <laughs> so get published. You get a lot of visibility, you get a lot of attention. But there's a strong possibility you will lose control over your IP. And there are other challenges there as well. So two other possible solutions. One is start with a much bigger snowball. Sorry the screen has got cut off a little bit, but hey, first time, got to take risks, right? <clears throat> PlayStation Plus is one of those options. The game that you see there, an image of, is Velocity 2X. As a result of going into PlayStation Plus, it's had over a million downloads on the PlayStation 4. Instant visibility. There is a whole crowd of people now who know and love this game because it's in PlayStation Plus. Another great game that was in PlayStation Plus recently, Pix the Cat. My favorite quote about Pix the Cat whenever a new game player plays Pix the Cat is, why didn't I know about this game? It's great. Well, guess what? Now you do. That's what it gets you. It gets you to millions of customers instantaneously, all connected, a lot of momentum, a lot of visibility. So you have a great start. The other alternative, something that um, my team does, is start with a much faster snowball. What do I mean by faster snowball? Does that even make any sense? Well, it means you know, you've got a snowball starting at the top of, the top of a mountain, you're rolling it down. It's gathering pace. Well, it's going to hit a tree. You know, it's, it's going to run out of momentum. It's not going to gather any pace. Well, if you get a few people together, build a big snowball, push it down in a certain direction, it's got more of a chance of succeeding. So what does that mean? Well, it means we have teams within PlayStation that are really good at A&R, really good at advocacy, Finance, production, flexibility. You are all falling asleep, right? This is not what we mean. This is what we mean. We like to make a difference. Really, really important for us to make a difference in the world of video games. We don't just do this because it's hitting a KPI for the organization. We like to spot gold. Some of the best games out there come from the independent developers. We want to spot that. We love the world of video games. We won't have anybody in our team who doesn't love the business, doesn't love the people in it, and doesn't display passion on a daily basis. We end every week on a high, every week with high fives. That's really important because we love what we do and we are proud to be involved with it. We love developers. Some of us are former developers ourselves. Some like me still pretend to be developers even today. And this is a calling for us. To be able to change the video games industry is not a job. It's a calling. It's really, really important. So you get to work with people like that as an independent developer. That's the kind of difference. And yes, it does mean that for the right games, we can fund them and give them a lot of momentum, if you like, make the snowballs faster, make them bigger, give them a chance, give them a snowball's chance in hell. An example? 
I'm sure you recognize this guy. <clears throat> I mean, the reaction to No Man's Sky uh, when we first announced it and again at E3 has totally blown us away. I guess part of the, the story of No Man's Sky is that we're a, we're a small team, you know? We're, we're a very small team making a, a really ambitious game. And, and what a partner give us, gives us, and what Sony in particular has really given us at E3, is just this massive amplifier, you know? This, this microphone that you speak into and, and everyone hears kind of thing. And that is so incredibly valuable to us. And we've always had that really good relationship with Sony, like actually Joe Danger was one of the, which was our previous title, was one of the first kind of self-published games on, on PSN. I think also the game itself, the huge ambition of creating a universe and letting everyone go out and explore. And that's what we want people to get from it. Actually, it's quite a, a personal experience, you know, that feeling of, what it would be like to go somewhere no one else has been before. You know, to see something new, to see the sunrise over a, an alien planet. The reaction that we get over and over again is not just an excitement about the game, but just this is the game I've been waiting for, you know, um, my whole life. This is where I thought games would get to, which is ridiculous pressure for us. <laughs> but it's the, obviously the nicest type of pressure to have. So, it was Sean's dream to be up on stage at E3 to present a game. And we felt what he felt about the game as well. We said the same things to him. This is a game that we've been waiting for. Here's a small studio, which started off with a core team of four people working on No Man's Sky, expanded up to seven, then 10, creating something with such enormous scope that it could be compared to AAA productions at the last E3. That, for me, is what it's about, giving games like this the platform and the amplification so that they can be seen and heard amongst all of the rest. Here are my details. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. And thank you very much for welcoming me to Slash for the first time.